Hey, everybody. Final thoughts time for the Hav Inland Port. Although, before I actually get into final thoughts, I should mention, normally, I very rarely catch when I make goofs. Normally, I have to wait for Paolo to point out the errors I made. You know, and, and, of course, as you know, he puts annotations in the videos and news in the show notes. But I did recognize, you know, as I was literally just getting up from the table and walking around over here to film, that, oh my god, I totally forgot! On my board... There's this little marker here that is supposed to remind me that when I pay goods to build buildings, I can only pay in increments of one, four, or three. And I am pretty sure during the extended playthrough, at one point I paid like this and went diagonally in this direction and I only paid two. That's total cheating. Sorry about that, uh, Paolo. I'm sure you'll note that. Oopsie doops. It's actually ah so simple. This game d bends over backwards to give to to only create a few rules and then make them very clear what those rules are. And yet I still managed to goof up. But yeah, what the heck, I did it. Hopefully, in, in spite of that rule, you guys have a good idea of how this game escalates, of how you play, and and really how it's so clever. I respect this game immensely. Um, it is maybe Uwe Rosenberg's most elegant. And again, there's no better word for it, clever design to date. Because I love, you know, he's been using these resource wheels for a while now, ever since Aurel Labora, and it's here, and it's in, uh, what do you call it? Glass Road, loved it in Glass Road as well. But I love in this game, you're not keeping track of resources, you're keeping track of your, you're keeping track of how powerful your buildings are becoming. And that is so brilliant, so elegant. And I love that this game could become hugely fiddly, trying to keep track of how many, you know, when, when you're getting towards the end of the game and, you know, there's nine actions that can be done in a round and whose turn is it? What? How many actions have we done? It's so easy to lose track, but it's so simple. You just keep track of how many buildings have been put into the zero slot. It just works brilliantly. So smart. So clever. Um, you know, and then, the, you know, the puzzle of the 2D spatial element of your warehouse. You don't just keep on hoarding more and more stuff and you just have these big piles of resources like the original Lahav. Um, you just move this little slider around in the direction you move it, you know, wh you know, which the different buildings, you know, exploit in different ways gives you different income. It's just so smart. And I love the notion that you you have to, and like I said, I, I was kind of cheating when I did the run through because I wasn't paying appropriately. You have to pay in increments of one, four, or three. And so if you have your resources over close to the wall, that could become very painful because you get in situations where you have to overpay because you can't make change. And so there's, you know, you're, you're trying to position your stuff correctly so that you can get the most efficiency out of your buildings, but hopefully get them in position before somebody else ends up using the building because players can just use each other's buildings left, right, and center, and it happens quite a bit. It's really clever. There is a lot of neat, smart, fun ideas in this game. And it's a shame that in spite of all that, this game really doesn't um, sit well with me and Jen for a few reasons. The number one reason above all is this is, um, you know, it's, it's something I've been noticing a lot uh, more and more in Uwe Rosenberg's games that... Well, you know, I, I saw, I talked about this in the Caverna run through. I talked about this in the Fields of Arla run through, but I really think it started here with Inland Port, where he's kind of, you know, his previous big games, you know, the Agricolas and the Lahav, for that matter, or Merc Mercator or whatnot, there, it, it used to be that his games featured a lot more structure, a lot more scaffolding, you know, a lot more you know, rules and restrictions that you had to work within to, you know, and, and you had to struggle against and you had to come up with clever solutions for so that you could, you know, make the most points possible. And more and more, he is going down the road of saying, you know what, to heck with that. Let's have fewer restrictions. Let's have more freedom. And let's, cur let's create sandbox games where you can do whatever you want. And you can just explore and you can come up with interesting combos. And every time you play, it's, it's, it is literally, it's a sandbox for you to figure out the best moves for you to make. And I'm not going to create any kind of guidelines. It's up to you to come up with your own, you know, to forge your own path. And now, that, to a certain extent, that's fine. I mean, that's not something that we're necessarily that fond of because we like restrictions. We like having a canvas to paint on. Instead of, oh, the whole sky, do whatever you want. We like saying, no, 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 tell us how big our canvas is so we, you know, we can work within the borders. We like that. But that's not my problem with this game um, because going hand in hand with this more broad, wide open sandbox, he seems to be going less and less towards variable setup. 
And this game is the worst of his recent examples because every time you play the game, it's going to be the exact same starting scenario every single time. The same five buildings will come out, the same additional buildings will come out in the same order every time. And while I'm not going to go so far as to say that this hurts the replayability of this game, because if this game were not replayable, then chess wouldn't be replayable. And, you know, the game does blossom as the, as the buildings get built, and um, you a, and really the big confounder is when you thought you were going to get to use your building, but then somebody paid to use your building, and suddenly now, oh crap, I can't use my building, my plans are rent asunder, I have to come up with a different plan. You will find that there is variability in replays, but even still, Jen and I find that, well, one, it takes a while to get to that. It's not really until the halfway part of the point of the game where there's a whole bunch of buildings out, there's you know a whole bunch of options that things really start to open up. We have found in the was it now um, the four th this would be the fifth time I played the game. Every time we played the game, the opening feels very very similar. Almost the first half of the game when you're doing just those really short turns just feels almost kind of to us monotonous as we're just going through the motions waiting to get to the cool stuff and. Um, I really just wish that there was something that you know created the the original starting parameters of this game in a different state. You know, the, the game came with, I mean, heck, I don't know, you mixed up all the A's, B's, and C's, and you only put out three every round, or something like that. So, the, the, you know, the early buildings came out in a different order, and that forced different paths in the early game. Like I said, in the late game, you will get different paths, as you're trying as best you can with all these different buildings to come up with the best way to make um, 30 bucks so that you could buy the Pont de Normandy, you know, the, the Normandy point. And, you know, at the end of the game, and when it's a big, explosive, elaborate thing, uh, you know, you, you have a lot of flexibility, you, you, but at the early game, it doesn't feel that way. But then, by the same token, when it gets to that late game, and there's this ridiculous explosion of options, we once again feel like, now this is getting back to the other point, we feel like, man, I almost wish this was less of a sandbox, because there is so much to contemplate, so many different options to explore, so many different avenues for getting wood and clay and money. There's all these different things and you know it can really be kind of overwhelming and we find ourselves wishing man you know we, we well again we find ourselves wishing for something like the cards from Agricola something or you know a preset configuration of how the game is going to evolve so that we can work within those confines again a lot of people love you know a lot of people love chess which every time you play it starts out the same but of course it's going to evolve into a different game but Jen and I, we find that to be less than satisfying, and so that's our problem with uh, Le Havre and the Port. Nothing, it's, you know, I, I gotta say, it's like, you know, in a relationship. Look, it's not you, it's us. You're cool, you're fine, you do what you do and you do it well, it's just not what we're looking for. I'm sorry, Le Havre and Port, but I think we gotta break up. It's not you, it's us. And that's the situation we find ourselves in with this game. And more and more, I find myself with more of Uwe's games. I found it in Caverna. I found it in Fields of uh, Arla. And um, you know, I just find myself wishing for the older Uwe, who um, you know, didn't make these wide open sandboxes with a million different ways you could do everything, and you can always get what you need because there are so many different avenues to explore, and at the same time, there's no restrictions, there's no um, guiding path, there's no structure that you, know, you have to work your way through. And it's just... I guess we liked it more when Uwe used to beat us up a bit. And now that you know he's charming and kindly Uncle Uwe who just gives us everything we want, we just find ourselves kind of adrift and lost at sea. And that's why the game doesn't work for us. But hopefully, you guys could tell from the run-through whether it would work for you because the game, I can't fault the game. It works brilliantly. It's mechanically br solid, well-founded, nicely done. And that's it, folks. That is La Havre in the Port. If you notice any mistakes, please point them out. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, as always, let me know. I will do my best to answer them. And otherwise, hope you have a very, very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye.